Hey everyone, this is Yosaki Gamer here, the creator of the Paradox of Parodies and the other channels that you see on the YouTube banner. Well anyways here, this time this is going to be another behind the scenes of how I record um, PC games. Such as games like what I did recently was um, Puppet Saves the Sioux, for example, or some of the other humongous entertainment games to the Botanicals, etc, etc. Now, there is one thing I do want to be mentioned is this here. Anything that I say in this video, there might be better ways of doing this here. I'm not going to say that the ways that I have done it are the best ways. I'm just showing you of how I have done this here. But before we do that here, the first things first, um, so the way how this video is going to be split up is this here. So this first part is going to be talking about uh, nothing but the screen records, which is on the left here of this um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles ring. When you have where it says that the logo down here, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 um, complete. And then on the right hand side over here is going to be like the emulators and things. And I have some examples and you will see in real time of like how I would do this. So don't be worried about me not showing this off or anything. Now, one thing that I do need to say is this here. Um, I will be showing you all, all these here and the website and mention some other ones that, you know, that I haven't used and I think I think people still sometimes use, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's get on with this. So first off, the screen recorders right here. Um, I have used Bandicam the most, and if you can't tell, up here at the top of the screen here where you see recording at whatever time and all that stuff is, um, this is Bandicam, and Bandicam to me has been one of the better ones right here, and this is what it will look like here, and it will tell you, um, if you want to, if you want to select an area, uh, so select a screen resolution, I never mess with around the mouse so I can't see nothing in full screen. Well, I have three displays on my PC, so that's why you see three different displays here. Now, one thing I will say when it comes to Bandicam, and here, I will show you guys the website. So Bandicam, this is their website here. This is a video capture, which, you know, you can use it for anything mostly. Like, you know, for talking to other people, this and that, recording games, and everything else. And before anyone asks, no, I'm not sponsored by no one in this whole video. I'm just showing you the website so you can kind of see what's going on with all of this. So that way you get an idea of, you know, what some of these websites are like. So right here, you can kind of see, you know, it gives you the offerings and things. Well, now, why do I use Bandicam? Because Bandicam has been good when it comes to recording um, gameplay footage. So, I again, the recent example is Puppet Saves a Sue, and I have used it for that there. But one thing that should be mentioned is this here. So, if you are recording any games or anything, you see this, like, right here, where it's just, like, display one, and the little picture right here of the actual screen or display it's highlighting. So if I was to open this up and let's say I either want to play like South Park games or any of my Steam games over here or Team Fortress 2, whatever. Um, what's nice is that it will automatically detect it and be like, oh, hey, he's about to go ahead and play a game and things. And you will see like if I play Team Fortress 2, you will see like a Team Fortress 2 logo right here. And it was very easy, easy here. And now I have never used um Bandy Cut. I think I know that's Bandy Cam's um video editor, but I have never used it because I usually just record my games here. Then I would go ahead and import this here to um like Movie Studio Platinum Seventeen I have or Silent Power Director sixteen here. But for those who are wondering like how much this is here costs and things well, you can always download this for free, like most of these, and see if you like any of them right here. But if you were going to buy it for one like for one PC, and this is what I have, it's about forty bucks. I think most of the time, just like how if you're getting like antivirus, like you know, trying them stuff out and everything, so you can try out a trial, and then you know you can get it for a better deal than just straight buying it here. But Bandicam, out of the ones I use personally more of now, is probably the best ones that I like. And now, another screen recorder that people have used back in the day would have been something like Fraps. 
right here. Now, I have never used FRAVs. I know it was really used back in the day, and I don't know if people still even use FRAVs anymore, to be honest with you. But, I mean, this is what like the latest patch was from 2013. Jeez, many, many moons ago. And I don't know if anything still being worked on onto this, you know, software here. But if you wanted to try it out, you can. And this right here, you get to see what it looks like. And geez, for Windows XP 2003, Vista, and 7. Yeah, so that tells you that's when this was really being used probably between Windows 7 and XP. Yeah, that shows you how old this software is. But like I said, I'm not sure, like, if they are getting any more updates or anything. So... Don't ask me about that. But if you were going to buy it, you can buy it for about $37. Unless there's some kind of sale or something else. Again, like I said, I don't know. I'm just going by, you know, the basic information that you see from the website. Now, one that probably a lot of people have probably heard back in Windows XP days. In Vista days, probably way back in the day, would have been Cam Studio. Now, what is Cam Studio? Well, Cam Studio, right here, if we go to the about right here, you can see for yourself, it's a screen recorder right here. This is at this time of the video, this is where it's at, at version 2.74 right here. And everything, as you can see, this right here. Now, Cam Studio is the free, is the free recorder, one of the free ones that. And I, when I say free, I'm talking about purely free, no watermarks, and no nothing, nothing like that at all, okay? But this is one of the truly free ones that you can use here without anything, but, well, I mean, like, without any limitations. Now, if you wanted to see what the website looked like, well, let's see here. Camtasia, yeah, we'll talk about Camtasia in a little bit here. Uh, but, yeah, Cam Studio, if... I can get to the actual website. Thank you very much. And I thought I had it up here. But you know what? We're going to do it this way here then. Go to the about. And do it this way here. So, this is the Cam Studio um, website right here as you will see. And again, this is really old as well here too. Because, I mean, if when you scroll down and you see the Lossless Codex right here, which I think this is one of the ones that you do want to get here. You see the stickers of Windows XP, Vista Compatible, jeez. <laughs> um, Windows Vista sticker and 7. Yeah, like I said, this is one of those that you can mess with, you know, to see if you like, you know, like this or not here. Now, the reason why I say it that way is if anyone has messed with this in the past or... Hell, even like looked up YouTube videos up to this day about it. Um, you're going to have to mess around with the settings here and mess around with different kind of compressors right here. These are like your Kodaks here and everything else. Now, when I use this here, I used this for back in the day of Day of the Tentacles. I want to say I think I used it for the whole entire playthrough, not for the remaster or anything but way back in the day so we're talking about like 2013 12 you know probably 13 13 or 14 like somewhere in that area okay and like i said you're going to have to kind of mess with this and one thing i will tell you this is this um anytime you are doing um any of and there goes my phone there anytime um you are doing any, and I mean any thing that they're doing on the computer here, like your settings and trying to match it up. Now, if you have a crappy computer that barely runs some games, like at all and things, and you would know what I mean if you try to play games like a high, like, you know, graphics and things. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. And then when you try to record your screen and everything, and you don't have a good build computer for it yeah you're gonna get some lag and see some frames drop and everything but that's why i said if you're going to mess with any other stuff make sure you know how well your pc works before you do anything that will go with the same thing for bandicam here too but bandicam is a lot more easier than the rest <laughs> rest of these guys with that being said you know you can cho tell it to choose hey can you record from 
microphone for the speakers and everything else. Now, if I was going to save record because, you know, why not? And everything else, well, it only records in, um, in Avi um, file here. It does not record in MP4, which sucks, but it's whatever. And now, let's say if I was going to record right here, I'm just going to say, oh, I don't know, something like right here. Okay, hit OK. If I record this, that's what you guys see here. You guys see, you know, saying, hey, um, what do you want to record? You see, should see these, like, a rectangle above here. And if I was to record it, this is what it looks like right here. It will show you how fast it's going, how many frames, actual input rate. So it's only going at fr eight frames per second. <laughs> and things like that and if I was going to stop it here you could see hey do you want to see what the footage looks like and everything and when I did this here before this is what one of the footage here looks like it didn't record no sound so it's not like we're gonna hear anything except for my voice but I'm gonna mute that there but you can see right here like how well this is going for my video when I did a Pinocchio soundtrack right here but you see how this looks like crap yeah unless you have the right settings it's not gonna work well okay so we look right here the properties this I'm only getting let's see about for some reason 200 frames per second does not look like 200 frames and this is what I mean by you going to have to mess with Cam Studio to see if you can get the right settings. Again, you saw what 200 frames look like. It should have been like butter smooth, but no, it was all freaking choppy and things. Now, another one right here. If we were to go look, another one that it's another mention is Camtasia. Now, I have never messed with Camtasia as much as some other people have had, but Camtasia is an all-in-one recorder of a screen recorder and a video editor and again how well it works in things um, Try a trial and see for yourself But this is just one of those another things right here as you can see, but if you were going to buy this You're gonna be spending a pretty penny of 250 yeah 250 bucks for this right here but let's say if you want a two and one, I mean, you could do it this way, but uh, I, I'm not sure if that's what you want to do, if I'm honest. And yeah, it's just not something I would go for because I know people who want to use Camtasia, but they look to Cam Studio for this. And well, like I said, there's a difference between um, free and there's a difference between paid. <laughs> so that's another one. So, another one that I have used back in the day was this right here. The Flashback Express right here. Now, when I have used this, I used this for, what was it, for the Muppets Treasure Island games. And I still need to complete that, and I think I'm just going to end up doing a redo of that one there, and then actually doing it here. You know, like finish it off here. So, if you're ever wondering what's the difference between Express and pro and i think i got mine i don't know if it was for free like this here back in the day or if this was you pay like 30 40 bucks and well there you go or whatever but this is what the two differences are right here so after no time limit this here this becomes another thing of well you know uh, for like what camp um camtasia is but if you we were going to say buy it and everything else here so if you're going to buy for pro you spend about 50 bucks right here unless you're doing a whole bunch of volume things this and that and whatnot now I'm gonna launch this and I'm gonna show you what it is so when you first install this here just like with cam studio right here you get a flashback um, right here and the flashback player says what happened you know shows how what the video looks like once you actually play it I'm mean, actually get done recording it should I say but the actual recorder itself right here is going to be what this guy here looks like. Mm, let's see. 
Mm, nah, I don't. I don't need it. Thanks. So whatever. So this is what it's gonna look like here. Once it actually loads. So right here is what this here looks like. So I'm gonna pull up a YouTube video and we're gonna actually see how well this works compared to well what you see sort of cam studio but we're gonna pull up Sonic Mania Studio Opera. It's probably one of my favorite tracks in this whole game, at least the first act. It's been a while since I listened to um what was it? To the other tracks of this game. So, if I was going to record in region, just like in most of these um, screen recorders, it's going to be region, full screen. It's going to give you all that options. And then when you go here to settings, it's going to ask you, hey, how do you want to do this? Do you want this to be, you know, at max? And this is something that you want to look through here to see if there are any, you know, any settings that you think you might need to turn on, turn off right here. And whatnot. And I am kind of skimming through this because we got a lot to talk about, and I don't really want to be, well, you know, causing this to be like an hour worth of feel because I already got one plan that's going to be worth an hour. So, if I was going to be recording like this right here, and I'm going to turn this guy down here a bit, and I wanted to record the screen right here. So, what I'm going to do is hit. I'm going to have it be select this region, hit record. And now it's going to tell me, well, hey, how do you want to do this? And what's nice is that when you are setting this up, you have this here as a reference, you know, to be like, hey, I want this to be right here. I want this, you know, this one spot right here to be recorded. Now, you want to leave it as custom because. So that way, you, if you have a specific, and I mean a specific area you need to record, this is what you're going to do it as. So now, we're going to hit record, and you see this get ready, 3, 2, 1, right here. And I'm going to be quiet here for a little bit of ass. This is going to record a little bit of Sonic Mania right here. Alright, so you get the idea. So now when we say, hey, we'll stop, we're going to play this. Now we're going to see what this looks like. Now since we have this set up onto PC speakers or whatever, we're going to see, you're not going to hear my voice because that's what Bandicam is doing. But what, when we play this here, we're going to, should hear Sonic Mania music going in the background right here. And I just want to play that when we start off right here. So. Let's see how this looks. All right. Now you get the idea, but again, like I said, this is just more showcasing of what I would do here. So let's actually, you know, let's actually save this to see what the details are. So because I'm going to put this on my desktop right here, we're going to do flash flashback test. Actually, I wonder if it will allow me to, well, whatever, but since I didn't save it, we didn't have it, but like I said, this is something that you want to see if it works well or not. Um, again, like I said, I use a different version of this, so there we go. Now, another one right here that I have used back in the day was debut video capture software. And this one's kind of unique in the sense 
and you can see right here it's showing my desktop here so if you see me moving the thing tada you see me moving the actual screen itself now what makes this really interesting is that you could use this as a capture card software as you could use this to record from a video device and i will tell a story about that about um how well that worked out for me when i used it and keep in mind i had a low-end laptop but i will talk about that here in a bit but anyways here so this is debut right here debut right here if i can find the right let's see no did i know oh here we go so this is what debut is right here this is from ncah software right here and you know you can use this to record your screen your webcam any source of you know any source of different things and yada yada like it's just like it looks like if you want to see how well this works, you can see how to record from my solar drives and things and I actually downloaded it, but I didn't mean to. But you can kind of see what some people have used this for, kind of like a video editor or some kind of streaming software. And that's a no one too, but I haven't really used OBS to actually record or stream with, so I won't get into that at all. So you can see what this is all about, but let's say if you want to actually buy this right here. Well, so if you're going to buy this, they have a two different one, um, a pro edition and a home edition. And I am not sure exactly what the difference is between um, the pro and the home edition. So don't ask me here. This is one of those that you would have to probably contact the actual company or whatever. But so right here. You would be paying normal bucks, but if you're doing it for a discount right here, you can do it for about eh, 35, 40 bucks, give or take. And this has, I have never really used this in videos, but this is one of those that I have tried to use this as a software capture cards um, stuff. And the way how that worked was this year. So, and keep in mind, this was a very long time ago where I had a a very low-end laptop. We're talking about a Intel Celeron or Xeon um, processor, but this is back when I think Windows kind of first launched, like it was like year one, year two of it. And again, a very low-end laptop. Like it's just meant for just serving the network and all that stuff, or serving the internet and things. So when I tried using the, the device, well, the cool thing was it was able to find it. And I think I was using like an easy cap or I was using an Elgato or something else. No, I was using the Dash or Capture Card. That's what, what I was using. So, I mean, I was able to find it, which is cool. But on the video itself right here, uh, you will see it instead of being smooth like this, and, uh, you know, preview screen right here, be, it being smooth, you will see it being like, like jerking around except like really bad frames um fps frames per second like it was like dropping frames up the right but like i said when i used it again keep in mind i used it on a low-end laptop so does that mean you know hey this is software suck or anything no you probably could use this for probably like streaming and things but again i'm not entirely sure how it works and things but it's just one of those that hey you can take you can see for yourself here so now we're gonna get to the other one that I actually have used unless I have another honorable mention here when it comes to to it here Cyberlink power director so back in the day of Cyberlink power director they never came out with a actual screen recorder which is this right here this guy we're talking about right here they never came out with this sort of thing before until 16, Cyberlink Power Director 16. And this to me was a surprise when they added this, because normally they would add in like their own audio, uh, what was it, audio editor and whatnot. Because you, if you buy it, you mostly would get either the Ultra or the Ultimate. I think I got in the Ultimate and I still got in this other stuff right here. but. How does it look here? So it might be a lot more different than what it is now because like what they said 19 Oh 20. Oh, okay. Well, they gone up since then, but yeah 20 
And so I'm where they're at. So anyway, so this might look totally different than uh, what you're seeing here for everything else. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty simple. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too complicated. You know, you gotta you can tell, hey, I want this to be recording 16 FPS and 10 AP and I'm gonna name this whatever. You can record this at MP4 or Windows Media Video right here. Do you want to use your microphone? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? It works out well. But the one thing I didn't know about, and I don't know if it was because of my settings I had on here or <laughs> something else. So this is what I'm gonna show here. So I'm gonna pretend this scum VM window right here is my game window. So with where is screen recorder? This was um, part of the Jungle Book. It's what I use, the Paint Box Pals Jungle Book. And for whatever reason, Bandy Cam was just not working. I could not get it to work, but then I'm like, well, wait, look, I have a screen recorder right here I can use. Okay, awesome. So this is how it would look here. So to me, you know, it's recording, it's fine and everything. The game mouse is moving fine and everything else. But then, <laughs> let's just pretend right here, this like so-called cross right here, where my mouse is kind of at right here, is like the Windows, um, the Windows. So, while my game mouse is moving smoothly, here out of nowhere, I would see doing video editing that this mouse here in the middle was like shaking all in this one spot right here while my game house is moving slowly. So I don't know if they actually fixed that or not or anything, but that was just like, okay, well, never thought about that being a problem or don't know how to mess with it. So if you ever watch that video and wondering, what does he mean by, you know, the mouse screen in the middle? Well, that's why there, but like I said, it actually works well. And what's nice is that if you use Cyberlink Power Director as your main, uh, whatever you save it as here, it will import it to Cyberlink Power Director itself, and you can start editing your stuff right away without needing to worry about importing it or anything. So that is something cool that, you know, some people may not be aware of. And that is all the screen recorders I have to talk about here. And I try to talk about these briefly and mention a few extras just in case, but I'm going to keep screen record up for the rest of the time here because I'm going to show you like how I would use this to record some other games here and there. So the first one is, well, we're going to solve a scum VM because it's up here. So there are some, this is like an emulator for and like we're talking about like, you see I have Simon 1, 2, uh, the recent one right here, Puppet Saves. The Sioux, Joins the Circus, Dun Dun Dun, Teen Agent, like, you can use this here mostly to play, to make this easy of playing old school games without needing to use DOSBox. And yes, I will cover a little bit of DOSBox here, but I'm not going to go into much like tutorial mode or anything. You can look that up yourselves. But the way how you add games here to Scum VM, you just go here to add games. Go find where, you know, like if you have some like good old games of GOG here, for example, you could see, hey, I want to go ahead and add in, well, I don't know, like Sam and Max again, just for the hell of it. And if you, hey, this is what the game is, here's that, and everything else. And once you hit, you know, you have your settings or you just have your game in, it's going to be listed here. Now, what I normally do usually is this here. So... Going back here to Sam and Max, I will go to edit game, go to audio, and I don't know yet. I think I left it on there. Either I'll change the music device here, here sometimes, but not usually. But mostly I'll look for the text and speech right here. And most of the time I will have it for both in case if I have, uh, what was it, in um deaf people watching this here just in case because i try to accommodate everyone if i can but for some weird reason there are some games that won't allow you to do that like one of the cases right here would be simon the sorcerer right here so just like if i was going to do this normally even if i selected this to override this here or subtitles or anything else and what's weird is that like for this game anyways 
if you have the CD version, which is mostly what you're going to get from good old games and whatnot, unless um, you download the floppy version of this, you're mostly going to be stuck in speech mode. But if you want the subtitles right here, then you have to play the floppy version for that, where it's just mostly just the subtitles. But then when you get Nike's sequel right here, again, go right here and you see for yourself. I'm able to have both <laughs> things. So there's going to be some games sometimes where you just can't not have the subtitles on. And when I looked it up for Simon 1, um, yeah, like on the good old games forums and whatnot, they said, yeah, no, that's just how it is with Simon 1. It's not your, it's not your skin VM. It's just the so, yeah, that's just something to be aware of for things. And now, after Scum VM, we're gonna go into DOSBox. Now, DOSBox right here, for two people who in the room who don't know what it is, it's just an emulation of DOS itself. You can use this like to emulate DOS and Windows 3.1. Don't ask me how that works, because I only use this mostly just to, you know, emulate the games and things. But, one thing I will always tell people to do when it comes to this is that, if you are new to this, um, select help right here, and this is what give you all the, here, move this out here, basically so you can see this better. Uh, just look at the commands right here, because unlike having a user interface, like right here, kind of like where you see this is that right here, you, you are stuck in text-based form, like you're stuck in a text environment, like how earlier computers were back in the day. So if I want to mount, you know, now to where I keep my DOS stuff right here. So you will, normally you will make a folder that says DOS, and then this is where you put most of your games in here. But I have it in my E drive and not my C drive, so how would I get to that? So I would do mount E, capital E, colon, or whatever you call that, slash, back, forward slash, or whatever, and call it DOS. Then it's got to tell me E drive is mounted as the local, and ta-da, so now, in here, I'm gonna roll this down so you can see for yourself, right here, ta-da, E is right here, so if I'm going by what's saying here, it's saying I'm right here in E, and then my DOS folder, if I wanted to double check that, I hit DRI for to see what's in the directory, and again, do a comparison again, oh, that's right, 80 days, this that, this, this, and everything else, right, right. So, there's going to be some times where you need to install a game in this here, and you actually have to go into the actual directory itself, or in this case, yeah, directory, aka the folder, if you go, uh, what was that, a GUI graphic user interface, sorry, I know I'm speaking technical jargon, but, you know, I'm just kind of nerdy that way. So, I was going to do that, I'm going to go to CD, well, once I collect this here, go to CD, change into and I'm going to use teen agent as an example and right here if, well what's nice is that DOS is flexible enough so that way you don't have to just write this in capital letters you can just write this in little case and they'll understand now it's like a beauty thing of DOS back in the day so now that I told a change in here technically right now we are in this folder right here and if I wanted to double check I hit DRI and if I want to start the game, some games are going to be easy. What well, it says right here, T agent. And I think you need dot exe. that volume up here but as you can see right here the game is working it's working like if it was in DOS box you know working in DOS here as it is and everything else now again there's gonna be some games sometimes that 
you're going to have to install before you can play the games and everything else. But like I said, there are tutorials. And yeah, see, this is what I mean. See right here? This is what I was talking about earlier with my Jungle Book story. But anyways, uh, like I said, if you wanted to see, you know, what it's like, again, watch some YouTube videos about how to use DOS box, but you kind of see what getting in action right here. Now, there are going to be a, you know, a virtual machine, which is called, you know, um, again, what I just said, virtual machines in for, in, what was it here? Sorry, I'm swimming on my woods. Where a virtual machine is, I'm on my single computer right here, but yet, if I needed to run other applications or do anything else, well, I can have like a Windows operating system be right here, or oh, Linux here, or different other versions of Windows. Normally, you can't, you would never have a Mac version in this. And I kind of did, did some things for where it can work with Mac, but even then, that's kind of meh, iffy. And. Yeah, this is, you know, something that I use here. Now, example of this right here I use this for was for two of the Thomas games. It was The Great Festival and Trouble on the Tracks was another one. And then the one Disney game I did, uh, well, Disney's Villains Revenge. This is the same kind of setup I use for this. Now, this is going to sound a little bit weird, so bear with me here as I move this here. So... Why would you ever want want to do this right here and everything? So, in DOSBox, and I didn't show this here, but there's going to be some games where it's going to say this needs to be run on Windows. And one of the games I tried to run this on because sooner or later I'm going to do recordings of it was Sesame Street Letters. And if anyone remembers that old Windows game, you know exactly what game it is. If not, I might throw a picture up here or something you can see for yourself. But... Um, this game cannot be run on DOS, and when I try to do it in DOS box, I get a message that says, hey, you know, cannot run here, needs Windows. So, this is why you have how well this works for, works for action games, because when I tried doing something like with Spider-Man, this is like the old one from the 90s that came out on the PS1 and N64, I had the PC version. Um, try doing it in a virtual machine, like... The thing ran freaking slow, okay? Like, graphics were popping in, in and out. Um, the music was starting to slow down. And you got frames per second, like, about, like, five or six. Like, it was unplayable. So I said, screw it. I'm just going to use this here for, like, kids' games like this. Or whatever. But, again, if you wanted to go old school and show stuff like this off here instead of just using Scum VM, because I have this game, Scum VM, right here. You know, instead of doing that, I can do it this way. So, my house is going to look here. Now, let's keep in mind my display right here. So, normally my display, I have this at, well, right here. 1,718 by 1920 pixels right here at the highest of 32 um, bit right here. This is what I have this at, right? So, when I decide I'm going to play this, and I have this on mute, so we're not going to hear nothing much from the game. So when I play this here, and everything, you know, going through the stuff, whatever, this is what's going to happen. Or this is more like how it's going to look more like it in this case. So there's the Humongous Entertainment logo and things. Oh, good old Humongous. Jeez, I missed them. So if we are going to see how much retail space, yeah, so right here. Out of that big display I have, right, I showed you earlier. This is how much it takes right here. So it's not even half. It's like focus really more. And skipping that there, so we can actually see the game here. So again, like I said, this is what it looks like. <laughs> and I mean, it's no different if I was actually, you know, doing, you know, capturing on this screen right here of Scum VM or DOSBox or whatever. It's no different, right? But now, if I was, you know, doing this here, just like with anything else, I would have this be set for me to be like, okay, I need this here. Screen recorder to cut, you know, record what's highlighted in this region of the screen. And this is how I mostly record PC games would be, depending on what it's normally. I do try to do it the easy way of either time, or sometimes 
you know, again, going to GOG, right over, um, what was it, going to good old games, doing one of my games and doing it that way, but I have hit or miss when it comes to it, because what ends up happening is they make dark spots go into this big old screen and then it just becomes a mess when I'm trying to record, da da da, and things. So I just mostly record in this in the window mode, like what my screen capture, my screen recorder right here is showing showing us right now. So, I mean, hopefully you guys found this to be helpful in this way here, because I mean, this is like the way in PC games now. So I may ask, well, could you use Hyper Fee for this? Now, Hyper Fee is, and I believe this is only going to be up for like more of like Windows 10 professional, um, the higher up stuff like Enterprise and things. Hyper Fee is something that you can turn on for, you know, not to have, you know, like Virtual Box or VMware like I'm using right here, right now. You know, <coughs> excuse me. You know, to do emulation of Windows. Now, again, I don't know how well that works because, to be honest with you, those kind of things are not meant to be used for like recording retro games, to be honest. And there probably are workarounds that you can do this with, but you're not going to usually do that unless. You know, you have a game that can actually work well and then do that. But like I said, I don't know about Hyper Fee. I usually personally use VMware um, stuff here. And also, <coughs> one more thing to show before we go. So VMware does have a free one here you can try. It's got VM Player. And this is the free version. And like it says here, you can use this for Windows or Linux PCs. If you want to start using the, what I'm using right here is going to be uh, the Workstation Pro. The other one, performance is with it sometimes, it's going to be Oracle VM. And I don't have nothing set up here, but this is another one that you can use to do the same thing as, <coughs> excuse me, as VM Player or VM Workstation. But I like VMware better because to me it's a lot more easier to use. But Use whatever you can to record your games. So, when we're gonna power this off and tell it to say goodnight. But other than that though, yeah, this was pretty much how I record PC games for the most part. And, like I said, really the only screen recorders I ever use is Bandicam Studio. But, most, but Bandicam is the one I would say if you really wanted to do this, it's the easiest way to go. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys found this to be helpful and everything, and me doing this in real time and action for you to see for yourself. Because I know sometimes um, it can get confusing when it comes down to this, and confusing enough that you know you want to see it in action. And I kind of showed you a little bit of this. But one thing, like I said before, if you don't have a good enough computer, sometimes trying to do it at the highest settings, you're not going to always achieve that unless you want to lower down the graphics quality. Like if you're playing, like I said, for higher up games, not like any of these here, but we're talking about like something like Witcher 3, for example, or something else. And instead of playing these old games or like Overwatch or Heroes of the Storm or whatever, yeah, you just need to mess with your stuff, do some testing recording before you start to, well, do kind of like how I had to do it a few times before I recorded anything else, really. So, yeah, like I said, hopefully this has helped you guys out, and the next video for behind the scenes, because, well, surprise, surprise, that you guys actually voted on, and let's see, yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, and this is the next video here because I got lazy and I said, ah, oh, screw it, I'm just going to record this game and post it up there. So, yeah, that's up there on the community tab. But a lot of you guys, which I'm surprised, 89% of you guys, wow. Um, yeah, I'm, the next one's going to be about recording console games. But I am going to forewarn you that into details about how, well, 
how I record it for different game systems, what I think is the best way. And like I said, I'm going to be more informative when it comes to this. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Anyway, so you guys have a good night. Take care. And like I said, this video will be going up here either tonight or midnight or whatever. But yeah, so this is your filler content for today. We're going to end it here. All right. See you later. Bye.